After penicillin, streptomycin, science's latest weapon against some forms of tuberculosis. These are the final stages of preparation of the wonder drug. In the air-conditioned filling rooms of a Greenford Middlesex laboratory, operators wear face shields, gowns, headdress and surgical gloves to ensure that vials are sterile as they leave on their life-giving mission. Streptomycin, isolated in America after the discovery of penicillin had paved the way, is obtained from a mold grown on a fermented broth. Streptomycin is a white powder like coarse salt. In cases of tubercular meningitis, particularly among children, the drug has already saved lives which would have been doomed before its production began. Today, streptomycin production has been given high priority, but its manufacture is a slow and costly process. Yet penicillin, its parent, now costs less than four shillings a dose, where it first cost four pounds. And when lives are at stake, we do not count that kind of cost. Against the white death, there is yet no certain cure. But streptomycin marks one more milestone along the road to eventual conquest. Until the mid-20th century, tuberculosis, an infectious bacterial disease of the lungs, was one of the world's greatest killers. In the 1940s, a small group of scientists working under improbable conditions in four countries pulled off an antibiotic miracle, the combination of drugs that promised to exterminate the greatest killer ever known to man. In the United States, it was Selman Waxman with his colleague Albert Schatz. The most well-known of the new antibiotics, derived from microbes found in common dirt, was streptomycin, discovered in 1943 by Rutgers microbiologist and alumnus Selman Waxman, graduate student Albert Schatz, and others. Streptomycin would become the first cure for tuberculosis, then the world's most dreaded disease. In 1900, more than 147,000 people died from the disease annually in the United States. By the early 1960s, tuberculosis deaths dropped by more than 90%. Studies by Waxman and his group on actinomycetes found in soil would ultimately yield more than 20 antibiotics. Of his discoveries, Waxman would famously say, Out of the earth shall come thy salvation. You know, it's a very funny thing. When I uh, received the Nobel Prize, 1952, that was in October, you can well imagine we lived in New Brunswick. I was connected with Rutgers and a whole flock of reporters and commentators and so on came down from New York to interview me. So they said, all right, give us a quotation. What does your life represent? 
So I said, well, my life represents an ancient saying, out of the earth shall come thy salvation. And that was that, and they published it. And within 48 hours, I began to get telephone calls from various magazines like Newsweek and Time. Where did you get that quotation? We looked all through the Bible and we can't find it. I said, I didn't say I took it from the Bible. I made it up myself on the spur of the moment. Waxman would appear on the cover of Time magazine in 1949 with this quote, the remedies are in our own backyards. And in 1952, be awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. With royalties from his discoveries, Waxman's Foundation for Microbiology supported the establishment of the Waxman Institute of Microbiology at Rutgers, which thrives to this day. 